Hey YouTubers, Design Ninja here. Have you ever tried to apply a label to a bottle in Photoshop and the results were just not great? They're like a little bit off? Well today I'm gonna to show you a technique that I've developed where we're going to apply an Illustrator file label to a bottle in Photoshop and the perspective and angle are going to be correct so it actually looks 3D. No 3D software required, I promise. Let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop. This is the cup that needs a label applied to it. And if we go over to Illustrator, this is the actual Illustrator artwork that will be printed on this cup. However, we don't have the real cups right now, but we still need these images for marketing purposes. Head over to Illustrator, grab all of these files. I'm gonna make a new document here, and we're gonna use it just as a temporary holding place right now. And move this off to the side. Let's grab the Ellipse tool and holding down shift to constrain proportions I'm gonna make a circle and at this point we can't even color it if we want to keep track of where it is and that sort of thing we're gonna go up to effect and 3d and then over to extrude and bevel click preview so we can see what's going on okay so let's extrude that out and here in the, in the uh, properties we can rotate this okay and as you can see already it's beginning to take on a shape there click <clears throat> more options what we can do for blending steps is bump this up. I'm going to click OK for right now. Command R brings up the ruler so I can drag out some guides. Basically what we're trying to do, if we go over to Photoshop, we see that our cup is at a specific angle and perspective. And what we're going to try to do in Illustrator is basically match this perspective. I'm going to grab a screenshot of this image so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And go to File, Place, that would have thrown that screenshot onto my desktop. Let's grab this screenshot. We're going to use this for reference. Make it about this size and just bump the transparency down so I can see both. Okay, so we really just need this as a reference. Now hitting Command 2 will lock the screenshot because we don't really need to manipulate it at this point. And I'm going to select my circle again, move it down. All right, so now what I'm going to try to do is match the same perspective that we see in that cup. So clicking again in the Appearance Palette, and click Preview. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is change the angle to be more like so. I'm going to hit uh, Command Option 2 to unlock our screenshot. And you know what? I want to see this a little better, so I'm just going to put that on Multiply, perhaps. You notice that there's quite a bit of perspective distortion, meaning that the bottom is rounded this way and the top is rounded this way. And uh, so we need to kind of try to do something to match that. So again, I'm going to lock this image. I'm going to select my ellipse, click the 3D extrude and bevel, clicking Preview. And now what we need to do is go to perspective. This is what we need right here. So let's bump perspective up quite a bit. And as you can see, that begins to change the perspective just a little bit. Let's move this down just a hair. And as you can see, you could end up making this crooked, which is why I have the guides there to sort of help me eyeball this in the right direction. So let's pump that perspective up just a little bit. So we feel like it's about the same. Okay, that's not bad. All right, let's bump this up in size. And obviously, right now, we noticed that the shape is a little bit different, but I don't really think that's going to be an issue at this point, meaning that we have a perfect cylinder shape in Illustrator and, and uh, the real cup is actually tapered at the bottom. But I don't really think that's going to be that big of an issue once we get to our final effect. Let's bump the extrude up just a little bit and the perspective up. Now, there is a little bit of a, an issue here that I want you to be aware of. This right here is the actual artwork that's going to be printed. So you would think that you could just apply this to the cylinder shape with no problems. All right, so um, let's go to the symbols palette. And what we're going to do is make a symbol out of our label. OK, let's just call this label. OK, so now we have this right here has been converted to a symbol. Let's go back into the Appearance palette and click Preview. And, and down here at the bottom, there's a button called Map Art. If you don't see this, make sure you click on More Options. And down here in Map Art, you want to click on Map Art. And I'm going to click Invisible Geometry. We don't really need the cylinder to show up. 
click Invisible Geometry. Now, up here, what this does is allow us to apply a symbol to the surface. So, um, something you need to realize here is that there's different surfaces. And so I wouldn't want to select my label that I just created right now. I want to make sure I get to the right surface. So I'm going to click to Next Surface. And when I click Next, you'll notice something that happened. You see the, the red outline here? That's telling us which surface we're talking about. So that's the first surface. The second surface is the top. And the third surface is actually the one that we want. It's the cylinder shape. Okay, so with that one selected, click again on the symbol palette and click Label. Notice this actually applies the label to the back side of our cylinder shape. And if that happens to you, it's basically saying that this shaded surface right here equals the back side. And if we try to move it to the front and move it beyond this border here, it actually cuts it off. Now the reason it does that is because that's the boundary that Illustrator just sort of randomly chooses and wraps this grid around our shape. But uh, you may pull your hair out trying to figure out how to fix this. What you need to do is go back. So let's click OK. Go back here and in this window we can actually rotate our image. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate it. Let's go back into Map Art. Move this image more where we want it. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up actually, holding shift to constrain the proportions. Okay. And now let's turn this completely around so that the label is actually facing forward. Okay. And I'm going to rotate this just a hair, make sure we're straight. That doesn't look too bad. Let's go back to map art. And we can tell this is probably just a little bit too large. So I'm going to scale this down. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's click OK. And OK again. Now once we're in here, we are using the vector label, which is ideal. However, there are times when, for whatever reason, you go through all these steps, you apply the artwork, and something is distorted. There is a workaround. Now, once you get to this step, whether it be this one's the vector version, this one is the raster version, either one, what you can do is select it, hit Command C for copy, and now I'm going to go back over to Photoshop, and here's our actual image. I'm simply going to press Command V for paste, and it will ask us whether we want to do pixels, a path, shape layer, or smart object. Now, I like to use a smart object, and the reason is if I place this in here, let's go ahead and scale it up. If I place this in here and then realize that um, I need to make an adjustment to how the artwork is mapped, then all I have to do is double click on the vector artwork and now I'm back in the Illustrator. And I can edit the way that the artwork is mapped to the 3D image. Okay. So now that I'm in here, it's just a matter of scaling it however I need it. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, hey, do me a favor. If you found this video helpful in any way, please click like or subscribe. Leave a comment. And if you have questions, hey, feel free to ask. Until next time. No.